And he placed in the line of the orbit at distances of 3,000 years, Hitherian lots, the which places as the earth passeth through angels from the second heaven come into its corporeal presence. As ambassadors they come, in companies of hundreds and thousands, and tens of thousands, and these are called the Aetherian hosts of the Most High. Not a single individuals come they, not for a single individual mortal come they. And Jehovah gave this sand man on earth, which is to say, in the beginning of the lot of the Danha, the spirits of the newly dead shall have power to take upon themselves the semblance of corporeal bodies, and appear and take face to face with mortals. Every three thousand years gave Jehovah this sign on earth that those who learn the powers and capacities of such familiar spirits might bear testimony in regard to the origin of man on earth. Aha! Jehovah said, and when it shall come to pass in any of the times of Don Ha that these signs are manifest, man shall know that the host of the Most High come soon after. Let him who will come become wise. Enumerate the great lights of my serpent, for in such times I set aside things that are old and establish my chosen anew. In the time of the earth when man was brought forth from mortal to immortal life, the earth passed beyond Simu, and the angels of heaven remained with corporeal man, but not in the semblance of mortals, but as spirits, and by virtue of their presence strove to make man wise and upright before Jehovah. Upon the earth the number of such angels was millions. To these angels spake Jehovah, saying, Behold! The work ye have taken in hand, it was commanded to ye to partake of all the fruits of the earth, save of the fruit of the tree of life, which is of the knowledge of the earth and heaven, lest ye lose your inheritance in Etheria. Behold, ye now have sons and daughters on the earth. By your love to them are ye become bound spirits of the lower heaven, until ye redeem them in the wisdom and power even to the sixth generation. He shall not again arise and inherit my emancipated heavens, to which end ye shall be co-workers with one another in system and order. In my name shall ye become an organic body, and known as the heaven of the earth, or lower heaven which shall travel with the earth. And I will allot unto you a chief, who is wise and experienced and found in heavenly kingdoms, and he shall appoint from amongst you officers, messengers, and ashars, and ashafs, and esenars, and ye shall be numbered and appointed unto your labor in places like unto my other lower heavens on other worlds. And he who is chief shall be called God of this heaven and the earth, unto his making bestow I them. And God shall have a council and throne within his heavenly city, and the place shall be called Horeb, because it is the first kingdom of God in this firmament. And God shall rule on his throne, for it is his, and his council shall rule with him. In my name shall they have dominion over angels and mortals belonging to the earth. And God shall appoint chiefs under him who shall go down and dwell on the earth with mortals. And such chiefs' labor shall be with mortals for their resurrection. And these chiefs shall be called lords, for they are gods of land, which is the lowest rank of my commission gods. And God and his lords shall have dominion from two hundred years to a thousand or more years, but never more than three thousand years according to the regions of Dan, light into which I shall bring the earth. So shall be the terms of the office of my gods and my lords. And God and his lord shall raise up officers to be their successors. By him and them shall they be appointed and crowned in my name. 
At the termination of the dominion of my God and his Lord shall they gather together in these my bound heavens. All such angels as have been prepared in wisdom and strength through resurrection of my Ethereum kingdoms. And these angels shall be called brides and bridegrooms to Jehovah, for they are mine and in my service. And to God and his lords with the brides and bridegrooms will I send down from Etheria ships in the time of Dan. By my Etherean gods and goddesses shall the ships descend to these heavens and receive God and his lords with the brides and bridegrooms and carry them up to the exalted regions I have prepared for them. <laughs> And all such as ascend shall be called a harvest unto me through my God and lords. And the time of my harvest shall be according to each man, which is two hundred years, four hundred years, six hundred years, and five hundred years. And these shall be called my lesser cycles, because they are the times of the tables of prophecy which I have given to my servants. What? What? But at no other times, nor in any other way, shall my harvest ascend to my emancipated worlds in Etheria. Seven dans have I created for each and every Don Ha, and six generations of mortals have I given unto each Dian. The angels understood the commandments of Jehovah, according to their knowledge of the Etherean heavens, being heirs of other planets, and having died in infancy, and having matured in the S-worlds. But they understood not the Creator according to the practice of the lower heavenly kingdoms, wherefore their knowledge was incomplete. Jehovah said, I condemn ye not because ye have become joint procreators with the Asuans, for ye have done two services unto me, which are to teach yourselves corporeal things, that ye may understand and sympathize with corporeans. And secondly, because ye have caused the earth to become peopled with such as are capable of immortality. Behold, ye shall happen on the earth, such as are of your flesh and kin who cohabit together shall rise in wisdom and virtue, but such of them as cohabit with the assumes will bring forth heirs in the descending grade of life. The first shall bring forth heirs unto everlasting life, but the second shall bring forth heirs that shall go out in darkness. In the dominion of which matters your God and lords will instruct you, that ye may by inspiration and otherwise learn to control the behavior of mortals unto everlasting life. And that these labors be not too severe upon you, I created the Dans and Don Ha's in the firmament, wherein ye may be relieved from the watch by other angels from other worlds coming to the exchange with you. This also do I put upon you, that to rule over mortals to virtue by your own wills, governing them in all things, is contrary to my commandments. For what honor hath any man if made to do a thing? But ye shall give mortals of my light, leaving them to choose. Better it is for them to suffer some than to grow up in ignorance of the stings of disobedience. Behold, I make this a will and service on your part, because you have bound your affections on the earth. To your own kin ye willingly become guardian angels over mortals. Yet I made not a separate law unto you. As it is with ye, so shall it be with the spirits of these mortals when they are born into the S-world. They will also desire to become guardian angels over their mortal kin. But these spirits, never having known my higher heavens, will be unsuitable for the office of Ashars. They would be but the blind leading the blind, to prevent which God and the Lord shall provide these spirits in the first resurrection with places to dwell in, and with occupations and opportunities for education. For I desire them not to remain bound to the earth, but to rise up and inherit my Etherean kingdoms. And in this also shall ye be discreet in governing them, giving them the light of my heavens with some liberty to choose and to perfect themselves. Otherwise they shall only be slaves in heaven. According to their weakness or strength, so shall ye provide for these new spirits my S-world. 
Therefore, such of you as are appointed by my God and my Lords, as guardians over mortals, shall be called Ashars, and ye shall report to your respective Lords, according to the section of the earth where ye may be. Of many watches shall be the Ashars, and such of you as are appointed to receive the spirits of the dead into heaven shall be called Asaphs, and ye shall report to your respective lords and their kingdoms. And the Ashar shall make a record of every mortal of the great his wisdom and good works. And when a mortal dieth, and his spirit is delivered to the Asaphs, the record shall be delivered with him. And the Asaph receiving shall deliver such spirit with the record into such place in these heavens as is adapted to his grade, where he shall be put to labor and to school, according to the place of the resurrections which I create. As ye shall thus become organic in heaven, with rulers and teachers and physicians, and with capitals and cities and provinces, and with hospitals and nurseries and schools and factories, even so shall ye ultimately inspire man on the earth to the same things. And mortals that are raised up to dominion over mortals shall be called kings and emperors. <laughs> As my gods, my lords, are called my sons, so shall kings and emperors be called sons of God. Through him shall they be raised up to their places and given dominion unto my glory. Chapter 8 Jehovah said, And God shall cause a record to be kept in heaven of his dominions and of his lords, and he and they shall enjoin it upon their successors forever to keep black record. And to the times of my harvest a glory of these records shall be taken up to my Aetherian kingdoms, and filed with my Orion chiefs and archangels in the roadway of the travel of the great serpent. For their deliberations as to the progress and management of the inhabitants of the earth and her heavens. Think not, O ye angels, that the resurrection of your heirs and their descendants that come up out of the earth is an easy matter and of steady progress devoid of mishaps and woeful darkness. The angels under you shall become at times rebellious and defiant, disregarding your laws and decrees, and they shall desert your heavenly places and go down to the earth in millions and hundreds of millions, and they shall drive away the Ashars and then assume guardianship over mortals. But they shall develop no righteousness under the sun, but they will inspire mortals to war and destruction. And these angels will themselves take to war and evil on every hand within the place of your heavens. With the foul gases of atmosphere shall they make weapons of war and places of torment. With these elements shall they make suffocating hells in order to cast one another in chaos. And mortals who shall be slain in war shall be born in spirit in chaos on the battlefields. In chaos shall such spirits enter the S-world, and they shall not know that they are dead as to the earth life, but shall still keep fighting right and left. An enemy shall take enemy in these heavens and cast them in the places of torment, which they shall have built, and they shall not know peace nor wisdom. And the work of your heaven shall come as nothing, and ye shall turn to going about delivering hells and the spirits and chaos, and your labor shall be exhausted. Verily shall you cry out, because ye came and peopled the earth. This also have I created possible unto my creations, for both angels and mortals shall learn to know the elements of the heavens and the earth, and to know the trials of love and misfortune. Nor have I made wisdom possible unto any man or angel that knoweth not my elements, and the extremes of evil and good which I created. But in the times of great darkness which shall come upon the earth in these heavens, lo, I will bring the earth into Danha, and my Ethereum shall come in my name and deliver them. And again for another cycle shall they be left with the lessons given to them. 
but they shall fall again in course of time. But again will I deliver them through my gods and goddesses, who will I cause them to comprehend the magnitude of my creation. And ye travel from heaven to heaven in atmospheric ships, even so shall ye inspire mortals to build corporeal ships and sail across the oceans that the inhabitants of different divisions of the earth may become known to one another. And when the inhabitants of the earth shall be completed and the nation shall have established civil communion around from east to west, in that same time will I bring the earth into the Cosmon era. And my angel ambassadors, gods and goddesses, shall render up the records of these heavenly kingdoms. What? Woo Through them will I reveal unto mortals the creation of my worlds and the history and dominion of my gods and lords on the earth, even from this day down to the time of Cosmon. And Jehovah caused the angels of Atmosphere to assemble together and organize the first kingdom of heaven on earth. And the place was called Horeb, because it was the place of the first organic abiding place for the first god of this world. And Horeb was situated over and above the mountains of Aotan, in Ugo Kui, in the eastward of Ul, of that country here and after is called the continent of Pan. Thus endeth the organic habitation of the earth and her atmosphere. And the book of Jehovah, ha! The book of Sethantes, the son of Jehovah, first god of the first cycle of the earth after man's creation. Chapter 1 In the beginning of the habitation of the earth, the angels of heaven assembled in Horeb, a heavenly plateau resting on the earth. And the archangel Sethantes was the wisest of them all. And he said unto him, Behold, we have come from far off heavens by the voice of Jehovah came we to partake of the glory of the red star of the earth. Jehovah said unto us, Come ye and enjoy the new world I have created. Partake ye of all the fruits thereof, save of the tree of knowledge, which is the fountain of life. Partake ye not of this, lest ye die. But the voice of the earth spake unto us, saying, Partake ye, for indeed mine is the tree of everlasting life. And many obeyed not the voice of the Father, and are now bound by the tie of life, which is in the blood. And the voice of Jehovah came to me, saying, Sethant is my son. Behold, I give unto thy charge in my Ethereum heavens millions of angels, and thou hast brought them to the earth, and they are fallen from their high estate. Go thou and deliver them. And I said, What shall I do? And Jehovah said, Bring thy angel host to Horeb, for there will I crown thee, God of these heavens and earth, for the redemption of angels and mortals. And it shall be a new heavenly kingdom from this time forth to the end of the world. For it is the time of the Ark of Wam. And I will bring from Etheria my high-raised goddess, Etisheia, chief factor of Harmuts, and she shall crown thee in my name, God of heaven and earth. God said, When I had thus spoken in Horeb before the angels of heaven, a great light like a sun was seen descended from the firmament above. And I commanded my angels, SNRs, to chant in the praise of the Father and his works. Meanwhile, I had the angels a Horeb numbered, and there were then twenty-seven million six hundred thousand, and these were the same who were on an excursion in my charge when the voice of Jehovah commanded us to visit the earth. The light above us descended fast toward us like a ship of fire, it 
came nearer and nearer, till we saw that it was wider far than the place of Horeb and all my angel hosts. And it came to pass that when the great light had descended to the plateau of Horeb, there came forth out of the light one million archangels from the Ark of Wan, in the host of A.G., in the orbit of Fausang and Etheria. And they bore regalia and crowns from the Orient chief of harmots. Foremost of the archangels was Etis Yea and her brother Yatiahaga, commissioners from the Etherean heaven. When they came near me, Etis Yea gave the sign of Jehovah's name, greeting Halton and saying, All hail in Jehovah's name and in the love of Harmut's Orion chief, we come to greet thee, first god of the lower heaven, belonging to the corporeal earth. I said all hail, O emissaries of Harmut's, chief of Orion worlds. Come, O Etis Yea, and thy brother and all his host. Come, honor my name in great Jehovah's name. The archangels then came forward a saluting, and Etis Yea said, In thy name, O Jehovah, I found here a throne. And she caused to rise the form and substance thereof, and she ascended thereon, and Yatiahaga with her. And the other archangels formed a crescent in front of the throne, all of them bearing crowns or diadems, but they stood upright, and now the angels of the host of God took their presence, that they might witness the testimony of Jehovah's commission. But the lights from the columns of fire, brilliant in all colors and shades and tints, baffled many of them from seeing plainly. When all things were in readiness, Etis Yea, standing erect and brilliant like a star, raised her right hand, saying, Jehovah, all wise and powerful, in thy name this thy son, God, I crown, from the Orient chief, Harmets, raised to the rank of God, and by thee, O Jehovah, ordained, henceforth to be known forever in the emancipated heavens as thy son, peace, wisdom, love, and power. And now with her left hand she raised high the crown, so that all might see and bear witness, and given the sign again of Jehovah's name above the crown, where from a flame a light shot forth brilliantly. Thereupon she placed the crown on God's head, a saying, Arise, O my son, thou son of Jehovah. Instantly there rose from the millions of souls one universal shout, All hail, O son of Jehovah. And God rose up, having the crown on his head, and the people cheered him lustily, for he was well beloved. At his yea, I said, Bring forth thy five chief lords, that I may crown them also. God calls the five chief lords whom he had selected to sit at the foot of the throne. Again at his yea, raised her right hand, saying, O Jehovah, Almighty, from whom all glories emanate, in thy name these thy sons I crown, lords of the earth and of the waters of the earth, from the Orient chief harmets, by my commission do I raise them to the place of lords for kingdoms in heaven. Peace, wisdom, love, and power. What? what? Then Edis Yea took the crowns which were handed to her by the other archangels and placed them on the heads of the lords, a saying, Arise, O my lords, and be ye lords of Jehovah for his glory, and be ye the lords of God, having dominion over the earth and the waters of the earth, in love, wisdom, and power. Amen. The lords rose up heaven on their heads, the crown of lords, and again the multitude saluted with great cheering. When the applause ceased, Edis Yea said, 
My God and my Lords, give now the sign of Jehovah's name that his glory may be glorified, for this was the oath of office. And God and the Lord saluted Jehovah before the hosts of heaven, and they stood apart a little distance, and Edis Yea said, Behold thee all at Jehovah encompasses thee. My voice shall be his voice. By the glory of faith in him am I one with the Father. And a fleece of golden hue descended from above and encompassed Etis Yea round about. And she was like a central star with rays of light emanating. She was entranced by Jehovah. Through her the Creator spake a second, My son, even God, I brought thee forth out of corpor, quickened into life everlasting. By faith I inspired thee to do whatever thou hast done. Faith gave I unto thee as the tree whereon all perfection is the fruit. By that faith within man that nurtureth the I am within himself under perfection, becometh he my son, undoing by virtue of my presence. According to thy wisdom and love have I given thee strength, and by thy stirring raise thee up. Behold, this day have I given thee a kingdom and atmosphere, and made thee God before all the kingdoms of heaven. This place shall be thy place and mine also. Here shalt thou dispense wisdom and laws, and appoint officers in my name, and by virtue of my power. And thy kingdom shall be like two kingdoms, one here with a host of heaven, and one on the earth, even over these thy lords. For thou art the judgment seat and creator of order over the whole earth, and in the heaven belonging to the earth. Stretch forth thy hand, my son, and clothe thyself in the golden fleece. God made the sign, and then raised his hands upward, saying, Jehovah, Jehovah, by thy command I call upon thee to array me in thy gold and a fleece. Behold, I am thy son. And the archangels tossed up the raven and regalia they had brought from their Aetherian ark in an A.G. And by the faith that was in God, the substance flew to him and encompassed him around in a raven of the upper heaven. Then Jehovah spake to the Lord's saying, As God hath built a kingdom in Horeb, and reigneth over this heaven, and over ye and your helpmates, so shall ye build kingdoms on the earth, and ye shall rule over mortals in my name, teaching them of me and my everlasting kingdoms in the firmament above. In testimony of my voice, receive ye this raiment of silver and gold from my archangels. The archangels then draped the lords in shining raiment, and Etis Yea came down from the throne, still entranced, saying, Through my daughter Etis Yea I will rise up in the flame of fire, yet will I, even Jehovah, Abide with thee, O God, and with ye, my lords, now and forever. And then it is yea, I took God's hand and led him to the center of the throne, saying, Sit thou on this throne, for it is thy father's kingdom in the lower heaven of the earth. And then God sat down, the entrancement departed from Etis Yea, and a lot of Jehovah went and settled upon God and the Lords. But Etis Yea sat down at the foot of the throne, and thereupon all the archangels sat down also. And God said, Behold, she that is greatest maketh herself least of all. Arise, O daughter of Jehovah, and enjoy my kingdom, for it is Jehovah's also. And God came down from the judgment seat and took Etis Yea's hand, and she rose up, whereupon God proclaimed the freedom of the hour. 
Thus was established the first throne of God in these heavens, and now all of the host mingled together, angels and archangels, joyfully. Chapter 10 when the hour was ended, God again ascended the throne, and the marshals erased the signals of order, and the archangels went and stood in a crescent in front of the throne. It is yea, I sat at the feet of God, and the splendor of her glory unadorned, save with white and yellow drapery, shone through all the talents Jehovah had given her, the perfection of purity, wisdom, and love, the lack of which only gods had looked on. What, what? God said, In thy name, O Jehovah, do I now found the session of thy kingdom in the lower heaven. As long as man and woman shall bring forth heirs unto thee, this kingdom shall not cease to glorify thee. Let the lords approach the throne. The Essenars now sang, and in the meantime the marshals and escorts conducted the lords before the throne. When they were in order, the music ceased, and God said, Five great divisions of the earth there are, and I have ordained ye the five lords thereof in Jehovah's name according to the number of inhabitants of the earth's divisions, and your relative rank before heaven have I placed you. When ye have seated yourselves in your respective kingdoms, ye shall have each twelve messengers whose duty shall be betwixt ye and me. Choose ye therefore your messengers, even this hour, that ere the resurrection of the archangels they may be confirmed, and their registry borne to heaven above. <laughs> the lords chose their messengers, and they were confirmed in the name of Jehovah, and the swift messengers who ply with the upper heavens made a record of their names and places. Thereupon God said to them, According to your talents have you been chosen. According to your excellence will ye be promoted to wider fields of labor. May the wisdom, love, and power of Jehovah be with you. All amen. And now it is yea, signified that her time of departure had arrived. God came down from the judgment seat, and stand in one moment in sorrow, reached forth and took it as Yea's hand, a saying, Arise, O daughter of Jehovah, and go to thy way. It is Yea rose up a point and upward, a saying, My house is in the ark of Awan. Jehovah dwelleth with thee and me. My swift messenger shall come to thee at times. My love will abide with thee and thy lords, and the harvest of thy resurrection. In Jehovah's name, farewell. It is yea, I then walked to the ship of fire, but ere she entered she turned and took one more look at the host of Horrid, and then stripping from the frames, luminous drapery cast it playfully over the SNRs and quickly disappeared in the light. The SNRs chanted and the host of archangels joined in with them, and in that same moment of time the ship began to rise and it was as thousands of columns of fire surrounded one majestic column and the whole circle rising in spiral form turning and rising rising and turning and then it was a little way up it seemed like an ascendant sun and then higher and higher like a far-off star and then it passed beyond the vision of the angels a whole red then order was proclaimed and all light began to gather around the throne, a covering over God and the Lord's. Jehovah through God said, Hear ye, for I abide also with these my lords of the hosts of heaven. The Lord said, What shall we do? And Jehovah 
answer, summon all the angels to pass before the throne and go and uh, oh, one by one that I may judge them. For as many as dwelt on any of my corporeal worlds of the fifth of the second rate shall abide in the kingdom of Hored, and their labor shall be with Essians only, but all of the full of the first rate shall abide in the kingdoms of my lords, and their labor shall be with corporeal. The marshals then arranged the angels, and they passed in front of the throne. And so great was God's wisdom, that in looking on the angels as they passed, he perceived the rates of every man and woman. And those destined for labor and atmosphere only, he caused them to turn one way. And those for the earth as ministering spirits with mortals, to turn the other way. And when they had all passed, they were correctly divided according to Jehovah's commandment. God said, Hear me, O ye lords. Take your labors and repair to your respective places on the divisions of the earth and the waters of the earth. And ye shall be lords with me, your God, for the glory of Jehovah. Whomsoever ye deliver from the earth will I receive in heaven. As ye shape and build up mortal man, delivering his spirit into my kingdom, so will I receive him and award him. That your kingdoms may accord with me and mine, I give you messengers sufficient, and they shall pass daily betwixt us, according to their proficiency and power, to pass from place to place. So have I chosen them. Let a record be kept within your own kingdoms, and these records shall be your own, to be carried upward with you in the next resurrection. And yet ye shall have a record jointly with me, separate from your own record pertaining to your kingdom's relations with mine. When mortals die and are born in spirit, ye shall receive them and enter them in your records as Essians, signifying newborn in heaven. And for these Essians ye shall provide temporary abodes, where they shall tarry, some for a few days and some for the space of one year or more. Of their numbers and conditions ye shall inform me through the messengers, and I will send ships to bring them to my kingdom. <laughs> ye shall appoint Asaphs, whose office it shall be to receive Essians from the Ashars. Whilst a mortal is alive on the earth, the Ashars shall abide with him, a garden him in the name of the Lord and in my name. But when he dieth, the Ashar shall deliver the Essian to the Asaph, a saying, In Jehovah's name receive thou this newborn spirit. He was my protege for the good or evil in him. Charge thou to me. And the Ashar shall deliver up a record of the mortal life of the Essian, and the record shall be kept within your own kingdoms. And the Asaph shall take the Essian, a saying, In Jehovah's name receive I this newborn spirit. He shall be my protege according to the commandments of the Lord my God. He shall take the Essian to the place to receive it, where it will have nurses and attendants according to its requirements. When ships come to your kingdoms, the Asaph shall deliver all the Essians they have received, and my officers shall receive them and bring them to my place in heaven. What, what? When the God had ended the instructions to the Lords, the Lords answered a saying, We will be thy Lords, O God, doing thy commandments for the glory of Jehovah our Father. God said, To each of you have I driven a great division of the earth, and each division shall be named after you, each in its place. This then was the rank of Sin, Huaga, Pan, Judd, Asia, Thura, America, Vohu, Africa, and Dis, Europe. And the lands were called after the names of the lords, and so entered in the books of heaven a Horeb, by command of God in the name of Jehovah. 
and the record of the great serpent showed the firmament of Temya in the third circuit of Avorkum and Danha torn afore. When all was finished, the lords came and sat down at the foot of the throne, and the Ennisaurs chanted a hymn of praise to Jehovah, and the entire multitude joined therein. When the hymn was ended, God rose up a standing amidst a sea of light, and raised up both hands, and said, O Jehovah, Almighty and everlasting, Help thy servants and found in thy kingdom for thy glory, peace, wisdom, and power. Then, making the sign of Jehovah's name with his right hand, he came down to the foot of the throne, and a taking the hand of Waga, Lord of Waga, he said, Arise, my son, and go thy way, and Jehovah will bless thee. Wag arose up and stood aside, and then in like manner God raised the other four lords, and they stood aside also. The marshals filed past the throne, saluting, and after them the lords, saluting also. And after them came the Asaphs, and lastly the Ashars. And the procession was underway, passing off between the pillars of fire, with which God's labors had ornamented whole red round about. This was the beginning of the first kingdom in the lower heaven, and the first of the reign of the Lord's own earth. Chapter 3 And God appointed in the heaven angels surveyors to survey the earth and atmosphere, and astronomers to note the place of the stars, and enumerators to number the inhabitants of the earth and atmosphere, to grade them and apportion their places, and nurses and physicians to receive the Essians, and administer unto them, and builders of heavenly mansions, and weavers of fabrics for covering the newborn, the Essians and builders of heavenly ships for carrying the inhabitants from place to place. And God appointed unto all of these officers and teachers according to the grade appointed to them. And when God had completed his appointments, the people were apportioned in heaven, everyone to his place to begin the work allotted to him. And God called the Asaphs, and he said unto him, Go ye down to the earth and bring to me the first fruit of the first resurrection. And the Asaph said, Thy will is our will. But what meanest thou by the first fruit of the first resurrection? And the God said, The spirits of the dead. The Asaph said, The spirits of the dead? Who are they? God said, When a corporeal cometh forth out of his corporeal body, this shall be called death. The Asaph said, Who then are the spirits of death? And God answered him, saying, O ye that died in infancy, how can ye learn corporeal things? Go ye then to my lord Waga, and he'll show ye. The Asaphs departed and went down to the earth, and the Lord through the Ashars delivered unto the Asaphs five hundred Essians, and they brought unto Horeb before the throne of God. And God said unto him, Who are these? The Asaphs said, These are the first fruit of the first resurrection. Behold, we know now the beginning and the end of corporeality. The earth body of these Essians was but a womb from which they are now delivered. God said, Well done. Take ye these Essians and feed and clothe them, for this is your labor. The Asaphs answered, Alas, we have tried them with all manner of food on which we ourselves subsist, but they will not eat. God said, 
Alas, O ye innocents, ye feed on ethereal food. These Essians must have atmospherian food, even as corporeans subsist on corporeal food. Go then, fulfill this first resurrection, for as much as ye deliver them, so will ye be delivered in time to come. The Asaphs then departed, a taking the Essians with them. <laughs> But in course of time they returned again to God, a saying, Behold, O God, we have gathered of the atmosphere trees of all kinds and of seeds and plants that grow on the earth, all most beautiful to our senses and savory to the smell. And we gave these to the Essians, but lo, they will not eat. <laughs> Being alarmed, we again hasten to thee for information. God said, O oh, ye of little wisdom, knowing so much of heaven and so little of earth, go ye back to the place whence ye brought these Essians, and learn what manner of food they subsisted on. The Asaphs went back with all haste to learn in reference to the food, and in due time they came before God, saluting and saying, What shall we do, O God? Behold these Essians, whilst in the corporeal form, feasted on fish and worms. How can we bring them the atmospherian part of these things? God said, even the last time ye were present, ye said ye had gathered up the atmospherian part of trees and seeds and plants growing out of the earth. Why then cannot ye gather the atmospherian part of fish and worms? The Asaph said, Alas, this difference have we observed. The trees and plants and fruits emit delightful atmospheres, most nutritious to the spirit. But that which is emitted from the living fish and living worm is foul-smelling, being but the sweat and dead substance evaporating. What then shall we do? God said, Go ye to the place where mortals kill fish and worms, and in the same time that mortals tear these things with their teeth, snatch from their hands and mouths the atmospherian parts of the food, and give it to these Essians. Remember also that little by little ye shall teach them to live on other kinds of food. What? What? And as ye do by these Essians, do ye also in after time to others, remembering that what men subsist on in corporeal life is entailed on them in spirit for a space of time after entering atmospheria. And a like substance shall they be fed spiritually. The Asaphs then departed. On the third day thereafter, as above mentioned, the voice of Jehovah came to God, saying, My son, behold what the Asaphs have done in thy name thoughtlessly. They came to the fishery and did as thou badest, gathering food for the Essians. And at their side stood the Essians, saying, Why gather ye food for us? Behold, we are now strong in spirit. Suffer us to gather for ourselves. And the Asaph said, It seemeth well, do as ye desire. Thereupon the Essians went to the fishermen and fisherwomen, who were eating raw fish, and the Essians laid hold of the atmospherian part, and ate thereof a sufficiency. And then the Asaph said to him, Ye have feasted sufficiently, come ye away with us. But lo, the Essians engrafted themselves on the fishermen and fisherwomen, and would not depart. The Asaphs, not knowing what to do, called on my name. Send thou, O God, quickly to him these skilled in deliverance, that my sins be preserved unto everlasting life. And God summoned those skilled in deliverance of engraftment, and dispatched them hastily with messengers to the place of the fisheries. Jehovah said, from the trees, the fruits, the flowers, the grains, and the seeds, and roots that grow on the ground. Have I created a ceaseless harvest going upward into the atmosphere, which shall be the sustenance of the spirits of men newborn in heaven? 
but whosoever feasteth on flesh on earth shall not find spiritual food in heaven, but he shall return to the butcheries and eaten houses where flesh is eaten, and he shall feast on the utmost faring part thereof before it is rotten. Be ye guarded of them, lest they engraft themselves on mortals, feasting on their feasts, and so go down to destruction. After many days the Asaphs came before Gaul to sin. The physicians severed such as were bound, and we brought them away. Shall this be our labor day and night, to lead these Essians about, a finding them a clothes and food? This have we observed, the more we do for them, the less they do for themselves. Jehovah spake through God, saying, A nurse I provided for the newborn, but when he is grown I command him to provide for himself, that he may be a glory in my kingdoms. By charity alone ye cannot raise man up, but be diligent to teach him to try continually to raise himself. For herein lieth the glory of manhood. Ha! The Asaph said, If we leave the Essians alone, they will return again to the fisheries and fasten themselves upon mortals, a doing nothing but eating. God said, Near the fisheries, but in atmosphere go ye, and fashion a colony, and it shall be your colony in heaven. A thither take these Essians, and not show them the way of the fisheries. In the colony put ye them to work, weaving, making clothes, and otherwise producing. But go ye for the food at the fisheries, and bring sufficient every day, and give it only to them who labor, or to invalids and helpless ones. By this ye shall inspire them to labor, which is the foundation of the growth of the spirit, and in course of time they will not only care for themselves, but join ye in helping others, which is the beginning of the second resurrection. Behold, this lesson have ye learned, that according to the diet and the habit of mortals on earth, so must ye provide their spirits when first entered into a heaven. A choose ye therefore your own people, a sufficient number to make all things required in a delightful colony, whether it be food and clothing, or nurseries or hospitals, or place of worship or place of dancing, and receive ye as many Essians as many be delivered from the earth, raising them up in industry, virtue, wisdom, mirth, love, benevolence, and adoration. And this shall be a new heaven unto you all. Ye are my chosen, and an example colony of all the kingdoms I shall build in my heaven. The time cometh when the whole atmosphere around about the earth shall be filled with countless millions of angels born out of the earth. Be swift in your labor, the people spurring up from the earth rapidly into heaven, and every colony ye now found shall in time to come be a great kingdom, requiring experience to workmen. What were you? Whosoever laboreth most efficiently for Jehovah, him will I promote to water fields. Ye are as one of the cornerstones of Cephas, and his house shall embrace atmosphere and the whole earth. Words are already taking root in the mouths of mortals, and for tens of thousands of years will war reign. Might against might, darkness against darkness, hundreds of millions will be slain in wars on the earth, and their souls be thrown into chaos, even as ye beheld these spirits a fastening on to mortals for food, so will spirits in chaos, millions of them, fasten themselves on the battlefields, still a battling, or fasten themselves on the mortals, obsessing them to madness and death. Chapter 4 So God 
would establish colonies in heaven for the reception of the spirits of mortals, and the colonies embrace the arts of healing, education, industry, drapery, manufactories, the building of ships, and all things required for the spirit, even as corporeal things are required by mortals. And great labor came upon the hosts of God who founded these things, a toiling day and night, receiving the Essians and providing for them food and clothing. And many of the hosts of God lamented that they had come to the corporeal earth. And they framed songs and anthems of lamentation, and these they chanted even whilst at labor. God was troubled that they should thus lament in the presence of the Essians, and he called together the proper officers that he might rebuke them. But lo and behold, the light of Jehovah spake from the throne, a saying, Rebuke them not, O my son, did I not command them, saying, Behold, Behold, I have created a new world. Come ye and enjoy it, even the earth. And when they had come, said I not to them, Enjoy ye all the fruits of the earth, save the fruit of the tree of life, lest ye die. But Corpor spake to them, and they believed in Corpor. Wherefore then shall they not lament? Do they not remember their former homes in Etheria, and thus aspire to regain them? But seek thou, O my son, to make their lamentations a glory in the souls of Essians, that they may also aspire to a higher heaven. The voice departed, and God, perceiving the wisdom of Jehovah, commanded certain officers to collect many of the anthems and deposit them in the library of home read in heaven and it was so done this then is after the manner of their lamentations to wit oh, where is my name o jehovah when i was happy and my fate to wander I dwelt with the hosts of far, far, of thy glorious shine, and know the songs in thy upraised kingdoms, when shall I rejoice, I hear the music of my own house, all oh, those a sparkle and a run in waters over the past times and feasts of love, oh, oh, oh. Oh, where is it, O oh, Jehovah, what was it? was my home in the hills, I fell, I fell in the darkness, a wandering soul within me that led me forth, the gardens of Jehovah stood on every hand, oh since this the fate to take me onward, and to the darkness was allured, sweet perfumes rose amid the darkness, oh, Intricate in the glory of Jehovah, I lost the way I was lost. Oh, 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 oh. I heard the music of the spaces shut out. I was environed in darkness. Oh, oh, oh. Where is my home, O oh, Jehovah? Why have I forsaken it? Crystals and high arches on every hand. Full standing out, a shining and the song. Of my sweet love, such was my home and place in revelry. I bartered them away, O oh, wander and forth. Buried me in the opaque and the dark, go oh, for my home and high heaven. Mirth song, rest and love, clear a shining. Thy own Jehovah has given me a sons and daughters out of the dark. My gems were born. Oh, I will polish them up, kin to my kin. I will raise them up. Thy goddesses in heaven above will come in ships of fire descend, and my jewels shall enter and arise with me. We shall search for my home, the haven of rest. Ha! I see thee, Jehovah, afar off, higher than the highest of heavens, O Lord Almighty, I hasten, O my home, and my rest, O right, and these my precious diadems, take 
us to a third world, but no one could repeat their numerous lamentation for there were hundreds of thousands of them, and as Ethereum sang the Essians, the newborn the atmosphere is listen long and listen and look upward, hoo-hoo, lonely, don't we cruel. Chapter 5 In the first year of Horeb there were received into gods a kingdom in heaven, a one and a half a million Essians, men, women, and children born of the earth. And there were still left within the different divisions of the earth with the lords, three and a quarter million Essians being for the first part fatals. In the first one hundred years there were born of the earth one hundred and seventy million Essians. Such then was the number of three generations of Ahins, which is to say that in those days the number of the inhabitants of the earth, not including the Asuans, who were not created to everlasting life, was fifty-four millions. And already had each of the Lord's heavenly places become large kingdoms. In those days the period of five years was allotted to the Essians as their time of infancy in heaven, requiring nurses and helpers, but some of them required many years more. After five years the Essians were taken from the nurseries and taught by symbols and objects, the rudiments of education, and drilled in processions and music and dancing and gymnastics. But every day they were required for a brief period to labor, some at weaving, some spinning, and some in a transportation. And the voice of Jehovah directed to God, saying, The structure of my kingdom in heaven requireth it of thee, that thou shalt make all labor an agreeable exercise for the growth of the spirits in thy dominions. <laughs> And God commanded the officers of the realm of Horeb to lengthen the hours of labor according to the age and strength of the spirits received up from the earth. And it was so. Jehovah again spake to God, saying, In all labor thou allottest to those who have sprung up from the earth, freely given to them to whatever they desire. But thou shalt not suffer them to return to their earth kindred alone, unattended, lest because of their love they engraft themselves of becoming bound to mortals. But when they have lived fifty years in heaven, thou shalt not only permit them to return to mortals, but thou shalt direct them to do so. For in this period they shall have no further desire for engraftment. Again, Jehovah said, As fast as thou canst appropriate the labor of earth-born spirits to help in the resurrection of others, so shalt thou do in my name. And even so did God and the Lords under him. And in the time of one hundred years there were raised up to the second rate twenty million souls that had come forth out of the earth, and many of them comprehended the manufactories, the nurseries and schools and hospitals in the heaven to the full, and they were in many things alike equal to the requirements of their teachers. The voice of Jehovah came to God, saying, It is well, my son, to take a rest. Behold, thou hast toiled a hundred years, day and night, without ceasing. Thou shalt therefore appoint other officers, and spread it out the kingdom of Horeb to cover all the land of Waga, the continent of Pan. And thou shalt appoint in my name thy most efficient officer to sit on the throne for a short space of time. For thou 
thou shalt travel and visit the five lords of the earth and their kingdoms, and thou shalt take with thee a thousand heralds, and a thousand messengers, and five thousand musicians, and thou shalt have a ship sufficient to carry thy host, and to be as thy house whithsoever thou goest. See to it, and set all things in order, and depart thou on a journey of one year. And God called in the surveyors who brought maps of earth and heaven, a show in the best places for extended the kingdom of Horeb. And God appointed fifty governors for the fifty places required, and he gave each of them five thousand men and women to accompany them. And when they were chosen, God addressed them from the throne, saying, Accord to the commandment of the Father are ye chosen, and by his command will I come to your respective places ere long, and bestow ye with all that is required for building up colonies in Jehovah's name. As ye witness the found in a horrid by the archangel at this yea, so may ye understand that I will come to you all. Go ye forth and take in your host and lay down the foundations of your cities. As ye have learned from me, go ye forth, a doing as I have done. And as ye do with a small colony and a small city, so will I give into your keeping that which is greater when ye are prepared therefore. When God ceased, the marshals led the way, and the hosts of following their governors filed in front of the throne, saluting with the sign of Jehovah's name, which was answered by God's hands upraised.